Usually when somebody sets up a new lab, they receive a package from the institute or the university they are joining. Hi, my name is Kiana Matthews. I was a diamond in the rough. I didn't receive a startup package. I think there is some unwritten rule that outward recruits actually get more than internal recruits, but it needs to still be fair and comparable. An outward recruit that had the grant that I had, an R01 as an instructor, which was almost unheard of, the, the gold standard of research award would probably be given a half a million dollars to $750,000 to start up a lab. And how much were you given? $5,000 a year, <laughs> three years, and money in kind. <laughs> Hopefully by sharing my experiences at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, we paved the way so no other faculty member will given less than what they should receive or deserve, but given fair market value to those that are being recruited. Postdoctoral time and then your transition into a full-time faculty, what were the challenges? The University of Alabama at Birmingham, where I did my postdoctoral fellowship, I fell in love with adenovirus vectors, how to manipulate adenovirus vectors to make them more immunogenic and less immunogenic to deliver drugs that could treat cancer. My projects then expanded onto vaccine delivery systems, primarily for HIV infection. I wrote a series of grants with my mentor at that time, and these grants were funded through the National Institutes of Health. It was then I um, became a individual independent investigator, and I pursued that line of training for several more years. UAB is an excellent training facility, but to transition into faculty, I, I felt a little bit challenged. I didn't see very many people that look like me as African-American scientists, let alone as African-American woman scientists trying to transition in a clinical department, in a clinical division. It was very difficult transitioning and starting my own lab with no blueprints. We still succeeded as far as the research. We published several papers. This opened opportunities to develop into new projects. But I think that it was very uh, off-putting at um, the um, previous institution. So you are a PhD. You were trying to get a full-time faculty role as a researcher in a clinical department. So do you think that may have been a challenge on its own? I think that a basic biology department or microbiology department would have been better for me as a PhD because they really appreciate the basic research components. And not that the Department of Medicine does not, but they're mostly clinical. They have um, systems and infrastructures to support MDs where basic science departments are mostly PhD driven in some cases. The PhD, um, PhD faculty can teach courses to supplement um, their salaries if uh, grant times are hard, whereas me being a PhD in a clinical department or division, I was expected to um, cover my salary at an astronomical level very early on in my career as if I was an established faculty member. So I didn't receive a startup package. M most faculty if they're recruited, they receive a startup package. The university had the standpoint, well, this faculty is already here. We don't need to give this faculty anything. And unfortunately, that was a huge oversight and a detriment to my career and should never happen to any young faculty because the startup package and these startup years to actually get your momentum is very important. And so when I reached out to colleagues and um, leadership and administration, I found myself as this shining star 
that had a unique situation from anybody else that I had previously talked to. I feel like this is very important to share my experiences. Why didn't you take your grant and move to a different institute at that time? Some naivete on my part that this would actually work out if I did the work. I think the the time to transition and look for another position is not always an easy one. And, you know, I was under the impression that the this division or department while I was there would actually s- support me and come along when they saw, okay, this person did do... Um, had accomplished a great many things. And if it didn't come initially, it would um, come on the back end. In some ways, just to be fair, it it actually did, but it's not an end-up package. It's a startup package. (laughs) From there, I moved on the University of Alabama at Birmingham to Alabama State University, where I also began to look at HIV latency in the brain and how drugs of abuse impact HIV disease. How has that transition been? And did this move uh, get you additional help? Moving to Alabama State University has been a great opportunity for me. They have been able to invest in me and provide more than $5,000 a year for the term of the grants that I brought in and transferred. How much were you able to secure by moving to another university, if you feel comfortable talking about that? Well, so I've been able to get large equipment um, pieces in moving, um, funds to move that well exceed $5,000 a year and supply money that will exceed that. Since I've been here, I've been able to be promoted to an associate professor. I was not able to do that at my former institution, which I was greatly disappointed about. Being in Birmingham that is predominantly African-American, wanting to show students that there are examples of women scientists that look like them um, meant a lot to me, but that hasn't gone without notice in the environment that I am now. Alabama State is historically Black college and university. So. At UAB, you face some challenges in getting promoted. So, so what were the challenges there? Were they related to what, what was expected? For example, like certain number of publications or certain level of publications or certain number of grants. So what was, what was it that was holding you back? I believe the requirements are somewhat the same. I, I've, since I've left, I've seen people get promoted in different departments and divisions with not grants renewed or not as many papers as I I have myself, but, you know, different units have different requirements. But I think, you know, the process is subjective and I would not necessarily say the, the rules and standards are always that cut and dry. When UAB realized that you were planning to move, did they make any efforts to keep you there, to offer you something more, or to help you resettle into a basic science department? No, they didn't. (laughs) Can you speculate why not? Well, I'm not sure. I would always hear, where do we find good African-American scientists or a diverse population of faculty? But yet, to answer your question, they had one and then didn't retain them. So there are a whole bunch of committees and I don't know if those are just on paper. You have been in Alabama for a a long time, right? It's postdoc, then your first... uh faculty job, now your second faculty job. Have you considered moving to other parts of the country? There are family ties right now that are uh, keeping me in this area. And, um, you know, once you you start the faculty track, um, it's actually not always advantageous to move unless you're getting a a super, super position. Um, 
these moves are costly and they, they do take time to move. That's why I said when I got my R01, I just wanted to do the work. I didn't want to spend another put another year um, looking for a position, transitioning out and getting settled. How much of a delay it adds to your publications or to your experiments every time you have to move your lab from one institution to another? shut down your lab. It could delay you six months to a year. I had a great team that I left behind at UAB and they were there working a couple of months after I left and I got set up really fast at Alabama State. And I'm happy to say that, you know, we're still publishing three research articles, review articles and book chapters per year since I left. And I'm, I'm really proud of that. So my accomplishments are not because I was at UAB. It was because Kiana Matthews is Kiana Matthews wherever she goes. But <laughs>